Hello, my name is Lucas. This is a bit of lit, and I'm going to talk about a favorite book of mine that I've read uh, this year so far, one of my favorites, and that would be The Three-Body Problem by Liu Cixin, uh, or here it says Cixin Liu, uh, and it's translated by Ken Liu. Uh, his family name goes first, and his given name goes second. I don't know why. It's translated to be this way. We know this is his given name, okay? Just learn a little bit of culture. Oh, uh, yeah? How about that? Let's respect some uh, Chinese culture here. Anyway, this is a translated from Chinese science fiction book. I believe it came out in 2009? 2006. Uh, and the translation came out in 2014. Uh, wow. It is a hard science fiction novel, uh, sort of like Arthur C. Clarke in that sense, but it's, it, I guess it feels more modern because technology is uh, more advanced. Uh, if I remember correctly, he is an engineer, or was, I don't know if he retired from that career once he started making money from his literary work, but he is a scientist in his own right. Um, and that definitely shows with his knowledge of uh, different, you know, mechanics and physics, I guess. Um, and it, uh, some of it in here is definitely kind of mumbo jumbo just to get you to have an idea of what this could be. You know, he definitely asks, what if? And uh, yeah, it, it's just an incredible book. It is set uh, with the backdrop, it's set in China with the backdrop of the Cultural Revolution, with the Chinese Communist Party um, taking charge, and Mao in control. It doesn't take place during that time, but that is sort of the backdrop, and in the sort of prologue, the very beginning. To give you an idea of the kind of world that they live in, um, and in the very beginning in that, we see a physicist, or is he an astrophysicist? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, he has some heretical beliefs, some imperialist, capitalist beliefs, uh, reactionary beliefs, and he is uh, taken care of, uh, sort of publicly in front of his daughter, who later becomes an ast astrophysicist, and uh, she's sort of an enemy of the state in her own way because she gets uh, pinned for a crime against the state, basically. Um, and she's forced to work at, uh, this place called Red Coast, uh, which is on a mountain. And Red Coast is this sign, this project, uh, by the party, the government, to send out signals and receive signals from, uh, to look for, uh, life outside of Earth, uh, extraterrestrial life. And that happens. <laughs> and um, there's this whole thing. There, uh, yeah, okay, so they make contact, right? But only she knows, because she, she had the crazy idea to send a signal, a radio wave, to the sun based on a thing she read about Jupiter that happened to coincide with a date of some tests that she did, but off by uh, 17 minutes and 42 seconds or something like that. Uh, and she did, or 16 minutes, I think. Anyway, uh, she did some calculations, figured that out and thought, wait a second, it's like a, basically a big microphone, <laughs> I guess, I don't know, or a speakerphone or something. Anyway, the she figured the signal would be sent off from the sun because of the electromagnetic waves or whatever, way stronger, uh, and it will reach a new civilization far off somewhere in the galaxy. Or the universe? I can't remember which one is bigger. Anyway, probably the universe. Anyway, uh, and it turns out these are the Trisolarans, and that would explain the three-body problem. Three, tri, right? Uh, body in this world, um, or in this galaxy far, far away, um, 
these Tricelarans are dealing with three suns, which are just causing these chaotic eras. And when they are cooperating with the Tricelarans, uh, there are peaceful eras. I forget what they're called at the moment. Anyway, some information comes out about these people to very select people. Uh, this American Evans. Is it Mike Evans? Oh gosh, I forgot his name. It's Evans something. Brian Evans? I can't remember. So sorry. Yeah, I knew it was Mike Evans. He's the, he's an oil magnate and he builds this other thing when he hears from Ye Wen Jie, um, who is the daughter that is an astrophysicist that sends the signal out and they build another red coast and they try to send some signals out and they sort of build this cult. They develop a video game to use this propaganda to get people interested. And a lot of people from the upper class are quite interested in this uh, movement, this organization. Uh, and there's three parties uh, within that organization. There are the Adventists who want basically human life to be wiped out um, because of the corrupt and evil nature of mankind. Uh, there are the uh, survivors who are a smaller group. These people are lower class people that are more interested in survivors who want to sell out the rest of them and work under work as a subservient group for the Trisolarans when they reach Earth. Um, and then there's the, I forget the other group. What is the name of it? Uh, the Redemptionists. And um, totally blinked on what they want. But none of it's good, okay? Because these Trisolarans, right? What they need is a planet. Uh, the people, Mike Evans and Yeo and Jie and all these other people, Adventists, Redemptionists, Survivors, they've all learned... Uh, something, a little bit of something from signals that they've received about the Trisolaran race. Uh, and that they've put that into the three-body video game, which they is part of a Visu interactive thing where you can feel everything and it feels real. Uh, pretty cool. Um, anyway, they learned that the Trisolarans used to have 12 planets in their part of the galaxy, or their part of the universe. Uh, and the three suns have torn them all up, and these Trisolarans, they have the ability to dehydrate themselves whenever a chaotic era comes, because they might freeze to death, or burn, uh, which they do end up getting burned quite a lot. And this society has no need for waste, they have no emotions, no art, they repress their emotions, no art, no, no anything really, except science. Um, because they're searching desperately for an answer to have a peaceful era at all times. And in comes the signal from Earth. And they find, uh, they, re they get a lot of information about humanity and all this other stuff. Cool. And they find that this place is very peaceful until the sun will eventually, you know, <laughs> consume Earth and everything when it implodes or explodes or whatever. Uh, so they want that, but they know that humans are a warlike species, so they can't live side by side with them. Um, and I'm pretty much spoiling everything in the book, but it, it is really cool. Um, so please forgive me for that. I recommend this book highly. Uh, there is... Very, you know, I'm, I'm leaving out some things so that maybe you'll still be interested, even though I've spoiled a lot. I will cut myself off from the rest of what I was going to say. But, yeah, they are quite interested in coming to Earth and eradicating us. And, oh, oh, the redemptionists see the aliens as, like, a god of civilization. Now, the problem that I will leave you with, that the aliens have, is that they know the ability for humanity to advance technologically 
uh, in their in their constantly resurfacing civilization, because once they all go dry, then they have to start from scratch. Um, it takes them the same amount of time from the agriculture, you know, the hunter gatherer to agricultural to um, industrial, what have you. All these take amount the same amount of time. For humans, of course, uh, the more advanced we got, the faster we started gaining our knowledge and Im improving things, I guess. If you want to say humanity has really improved things, I don't know. <laughs> uh, a lot of things, yeah, I guess. Uh, anyway, that's the discussion for another video. Um, and they're worried because they're 450 light years away. By the time that they get there, humanity will advance far beyond their capabilities. They're currently more advanced than humanity, but by the time they get there, they're going to be in constant motion. They're not going to be able to, you know, mine resources and do lots of scientific developmental experiments and that kind of stuff. Um, very minor stuff on their ships, I'm sure. Not that they wouldn't be able to do anything, but they've got to find a way to keep that from happening. Meanwhile, the humans have to find a way to fight back when these guys come. And yeah, it's uh, incredible. I, I did know beforehand that it was very technical um, and that the emotion, uh, the characters are kind of cut, cut and paste um, in a way, like cardboard. I, it was very technical in a lot of ways. I would say that, uh, I mean, the characters don't act like they might in a well-written um, Western science fiction. Uh, but just kind of knowing some other uh, Chinese translated books, it's kind of, I mean, it's still trying to fit a Western mold so that it suits our tastes, you know, but it still has a little bit of that flavor of Chinese style. Uh, and I think that, yeah, sometimes there are things that are a little unbelievable or the characters are a little flat, um, but I find, you know, when, yeah, 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 when Jia, yeah, I, I find her pretty well developed. I find a lot of the other characters well developed. They do act kind of strange in terms of it being, if it was Western literature. But you just have to remember, uh, it is still, it is a Chinese book. So it's being, one, the traditions are different. And two, uh, in literary fiction, and two, it is still, it needs to be translated so that you can read it. <laughs> so uh, there is that issue. And three, it's still being adapted to your tastes. It's just sacrifices have to be made. Uh, anyway, I think it's incredible. I think the characters are just fine. Uh, I like the ideas going on in it. And I highly recommend it. So read it. Thank you. Goodbye.